Hi New Life, I've got some good news about the family car. It's been repaired and returned, uh, but now we don't really have anywhere to drive to. Life has changed for me again this week. Life has changed for all of us. COVID-19 is now closer to our community. Many of us are working from home. Our school children and teachers are learning how to do distant education. The church building is closed and face-to-face -face gatherings of new life have stopped. People that we know are in isolation and quarantine. As coronavirus comes even closer, we know there'll be yet more changes for us. And I'm sensing in myself a, a deep longing for stability. I want to know what the new normal will be. I prefer for life to have a rhythm, but at the moment, most days are just a little bit offbeat. We're all looking for direction, and the GPS can't even find our location. As much as ever, you and I need God's unchanging promises to steady us. We need his unchanging word to help us navigate these days. We need his unchanging spirit present in us to bring our lives into sync with his rhythm. The Old Testament prophet Joel faced a time of severe plague. Life had changed. God's people were longing for stability and direction. As God's spokesperson, Joel called his people to lament. He said, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. He relents from sending calamity. New life, God's rhythm for us right now is to feel unsettled with change, to turn to him in hope-filled lament, and with torn hearts trusting in Jesus, we cry out to God for mercy knowing that he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Attached to this announcement is a resource for self-guided meditation, discussion in our homes and prayerful lament. Use it this Sunday on your own with those who live in your home or others that you can connect with via the phone or online. Though we're separated from one another, we will still be together in a season of lament. Now I want to let you know that this week our pastors and elders have ensured that all of new life is connected with someone else. No matter how isolated we choose to be or need to be now and in the days ahead, no one is being left alone. We're confident God will continue to move us along in our relationship with Jesus and in our care of one another. And we keep looking forward to Easter Sunday when we'll find a suitable way to gather and celebrate Jesus' resurrection and the new life that we have together in him. God has prepared us for these days. Last year, we were reading through James. Our title was The Subtle Art of Living Well When Life Is Not Well. And in closing, I want to read for you the passage I preached from exactly 12 months ago. It's my prayer that God will tear our hearts and turn us and all his people to him. This is what it says in James chapter 4, verse 13. Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. 
your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains? You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. New Life, this is God's rhythm for us. Take care. I'll be in touch again next Friday.